Hey, this is Adam here with Suite24, and I'm so excited that you have contacted our company to help you launch your app idea quickly. And I have the pleasure of scheduling a strategy session with you here soon so I can give you the exact steps you need to launch your app. But what, as I promised in the uh, video is I wanted to give you a short uh, presentation here that you can use right away to help you launch your app idea. Think of it as like the cliff notes to take your app idea from where it is now to where you want to be in less than 30 days. And I know this is going to be the exact strategy you will need to launch your app fast. So let's jump right into it. So here are the seven steps to launch your app quickly. So what I want you to do is you're watching this, of course, take notes because in about 30 minutes, I'm going to show you how to launch your app idea step by step. So obviously you can rewatch this, but you want to take notes as you watch along. So let's get started. So step one is going to be blueprint. The first thing you want to do is pull out a pen and paper and sketch out your app idea. If you've already done this and you want to add in more ideas to it, then I encourage you to download similar apps to your concept. So then this way you can take features and benefits and uh, functions that their apps have and put it in yours. So in this way you can really flesh out your sketches before you move into your official blueprint, which is step number two, which is real time board. You want to go to real time board and you can sign up for a free account and this will allow you to create a beautiful blueprint to take those sketches and put it to a well planned presentation like you see right here. So this is from real time board. It's laid out screen by screen. They provide all the templates and it's 100% free that you can use to beautifully lay out your plan for your app idea. Once you've went ahead and laid out all the features of your sketches into the blueprint, you want to number each screen, as you can see here, 2, 2.1, 2.2, because what that's going to allow you to do is that's going to allow you to reference it when you write your annotation, which is going to be the next step because you're going to have to explain in detail what each screen does. So let's move into step 2.1, annotation. What annotation allows you to do is you're going to pull a Word document and you're going to write screen by screen exactly what the app does. So screen one, what is the, or the features? Screen 1.1, 1.2, and just go through the entire application blueprint and write this out. The reason why you want to prepare this is because it's going to help a designer prepare your design similar to this. Um, this is an example of what our company does here at Suite24. Uh, we provide a full detailed annotation, so it's very beautiful and laid out. This is what our company does. But if you have something like this, that would be fine. Uh, if you want something like this, we can help you with that. But um, what it's going to allow you to do is going to allow you to save thousands of dollars when it comes to design when you have your blueprint and annotation. So when you come to a designer and you have everything laid out, pre-planned, you determine the scope of the project, you determine the budget, because if not, if you allow them to control the budget and you allow them to control the project size, they're going to say the app's going to cost to just design it, not even development. $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. Um, I've seen even more than that. And you don't want to be in that position. You want to control the price. So I'm going to show you how to save thousands on designing your app. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Fiverr.com and you want to search for a UI or UX designer. Once you've searched for a UI and UX designer, you want to filter it by three-day delivery time and a price range to $50 to $100. The best thing about Fiverr is individuals find work on this for $5 uh, or more, but that's the mindset of, these, of the, the providers here is they know that they can get quick work for five bucks. But when you put in a project budget of 50 to $100, they're going to be very attracted to your offer and they're going to want to work for you quickly and provide quality work. So that's why you want to go to fiverr.com. You want to determine the price and the time frame. Now, once you've applied those filters, you're going to see that you will have a lot of variety to choose from. Um, in fact, in this example that I'm showing you here, in fact, you have 2,800, or excuse me, 2,087 uh, UI and UX designers. UI and UX designer stands for user interface or user experience design, and that's exactly what you want for your app. And then once you have that, you want to sort by best selling because best selling is for um, the ability for you to sort out who are the best individuals uh, for your app design, and you could pick five star, and that's exactly what you want is five star and you'll get very well done, clean, precise designs. Once that's completed, you want to have them exported in two file formats, JPEG and PSD. JPEG is an image format and PSD is a Photoshop design format. The reason why you need both is JPEG is going to be for step four to help you build your prototype and PSD is going to be for later on when you get into actual development that you can use with the developer. So let's move into step four, prototype. Now, the prototype is going to be your biggest selling tool when it comes to attracting an investor, and that is what they have to see in order to make a decision to invest in your app idea, because that's why 
you need to take these steps because if you don't have the budget to build an app, which can range from 10,000 to 100,000 or more, you're gonna have to have someone help you do this. And that's what I'm giving you here. So steps one through three will lead you up to the prototype. Now, the way to think about a prototype is if, if you were to go buy a car, uh, you would not read an owner's manual to buy that car. You would go test drive it. The same thing with an investor. An investor is not gonna invest in your app idea because you have a business plan. Investors need to understand your app idea. They need to experience it. They need to know what it does. So that's why what you want to do is you want to go to create your own prototype at proto.io. And you can sign up for free. The reason why you want to sign up with proto.io is because it has the best prototyping software out there. And you can share with an unlimited number of devices for your app idea. Uh, but in fact, it will allow you to simulate every functionality of your mobile app. So you want to sign up for a free account for your uh, prototype. So here's a look at the interface once you create your account, and it's really easy to use, has a lot of tools and things that you can use. I encourage you to watch a lot of their training and um, contact support if you have any questions because there is quite a bit of a learning curve because there's a lot to do. But once you get it, you can literally simulate anything in your app. So once you have your designs from step three, you're going to click on new asset and you're going to import them into the prototype builder. Once you do that, it's going to allow you to use all the tools that they have built in to simulate the functionality of your mobile app. And like I said, it's full functionality. You can literally create anything you want in record time with Proto.io. And an investor is going to wonder if this is the real app or just a prototype. And then that's going to convince them that they want to invest in you. And once you have it, you can go ahead and share the link to your prototype to an unlimited number of people. You just have to give them this link. They can install it right on their mobile phone and that's it. So now everyone will have the opportunity to review your app idea, but more importantly, you have an investor that will be interested. And so here's an example of kind of what our uh, prototypes will look like. Um, let's see. Typically, this video will play, <laughs> but that's okay. I think it's because I'm uh, recording the screen. Uh, but what this is, is it would have a live video of going through this app and swiping through and functionality. Uh, that's okay. It's just a demo of how Proto.io uh, Proto works, but it allows you to see how this will actually function um, by swiping, tapping, and, and just some of the great functionalities that Proto.io will have. Um, and that's what you'll be able to build. Okay. So now let's start. Let's start to discuss step five, marketing strategy. Now, marketing strategy is gonna be broken into three segments. First is gonna be your customer or your key user profile, which is KUP. And KUP is age, interest, gender, location, income. And you wanna be able to break this down and be specific. Uh, you don't wanna be in a position where you're saying, well, my app's for everybody. Well, technically it could be, but there's gonna be a key user audience that's gonna use it. So you wanna break it down by an age range, you know, 18 to 30, 40 to 75, whatever it is. Then you want to uh, itemize interests and you want to create a list of 50 to 100 interests that your user right now is focused on. So an example would be is let's say, uh, you you know, the Super Bowl, right? It's a, it's a football game. Uh, they predominantly show ads about cars, uh, beer, male enhancement products, things like that, because uh, they know who their key uh, demographic is that's watching the game. Same thing with you. You want to make a list of 5,100 key interests that your user profile is looking at so you can put your app ID in front of them. Then we have gender. You want to do an, a ratio, 50-50 male-female, 70-30 male-female. You'll know that based on your application. Then location. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about it. Most times people are going to launch the app in the United States. Um, if you're abroad, then you would just launch it in your country. Uh, if it's a on-demand product, so like an Uber-esque type product, then you probably want to start in one area or your largest dem uh, demographic area next to you. So then this way you can have a nucleus to really grow your app. That's something you have to consider. And then some apps have income requirements. You know, if it's like a, a concierge service type app, or you probably have people with more disposable income. So you want to break that down. Um, if it's a social media app, it can be free for anyone. So just make sure you have in the back of your mind who this app is really for. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna create a capture page. Now the capture page is, has one purpose. It's a one page website that breaks down the key functions and features of your app that people can learn about so they can sign up early before it goes live. So you wanna create a website like this. They're very easy to do. You can use Wix, you can use GoDaddy, you can use uh, Squarespace, whatever you want. Um, whatever, you know, they range from free to $10 a month. All I recommend is remove any of their banners because it'll cheapen your deal. You got to make it look like an official site. So don't take the free version and have their banners that you built a free website. That's going to really turn people off. 
Um, but you want to go ahead, create a site like this, create, uh, collect an email because you're going to build a pre sign up list before the app goes live. And you want to build a pre sign up list before it goes live because you don't want to spend all the time, money, and energy developing an app and no one knows about it. So, what you want to do is you want to build a list of a thousand to five thousand people. So, by the time it hits the app store, you already have people ready to download your app and they can. Um, you can start benefiting from your revenue model that you've put in place. Okay, so then next we want to do is we want to leverage influencers. Well, we primarily focus on Instagram influencers. And here are some key points you want to look at to help you promote your app idea before it goes live. You want to look for an influencer that has 100,000, 500,000 followers. You want to look at the five most recent points to make sure that they have strong engagement with their followers. And then you want to contact them once you've identified those two key factors. You want to contact them for their 24 hour rate with link in bio. Link in bio is very important because you cannot put a link in a post. You have to direct them back to the influencer's account to click the link in their profile to go to your website so they can pre sign up. So you want to start with a 24 hour rate. They're going to give you a 24 hour rate. Typically in this follower range, they're going to come back to about $100 or $200 for a 24 hour rate. You're going to thank them for that, but then you're going to negotiate for a one hour post. You're going to say, okay, great. Um, I only need a one hour post. With LinkedIn bio, I'll give you 10 bucks. Majority of the time, they're gonna say, yeah, that's fine with me. And the reason why you want that for one hour is because that's a golden hour. That's when you're gonna get the most traffic from that post. After that, it's just gonna get buried in the feed and you're paying for time you don't need. So make sure you negotiate for one hour. All right, so it'd be something similar like this. So let's say that you are a fitness product, you reach out to this person, uh, you notice they have the amount of followers you need, uh, they clearly promote fitness products because they have a link in their bio about it. And um, it's someone that fits the uh, parameters I'd sent. So I have 100,000, 500,000 followers, five most recent points have, are posts of engagement. Then you're going to click on send message and then negotiate the rate accordingly. Okay. So here's how it'll flow. You have the Instagram post, a link in bio. You go to the inf influencers page on Instagram. That will direct them to the capture page. And then you get a new pre sign up for your app idea. So the way it typically works, the numbers that we see on average is for every influencer that has 100,000 followers, approximately 500 of them will actually visit your website. And out of that, 20% will leave their email. So that's 100 new signups. Well, if you have 100 new signups divided by $10 that you spent per signup, that's 10 cents per signup. It's extremely cheap traffic and you can build a list for a couple hundred bucks a month if you scale this. So the example is if you have $10 per influencer, you have 20 influencers, you would spend about $200 for that month, but you would have 2,000 pre signups for your app idea in one month. And on average, it takes about four to five months for an investor to back your app idea. So when you approach them, you already have a pre sign up list of anywhere between eight to 10,000 pre sign ups to help you launch your app. Now, let's discuss step six, and that is revenue model. Okay, so there are six revenue types for your app idea. The first one can be purchased, they can purchase the app from the app store. Next is in-app purchases. They can download it, but then you have things inside the app that they can buy ranging from 99 cents all the way up to $100. Just depends on what you want to sell. The other one is freemium. An example are games. You can download any game for free and play it, but they have a lot of things in there that you can buy, which would also be an in-app purchase. It may be ad supported. You can upgrade for a subscription and um, you know that way you can get rid of ads. Uh, that'd be an example of a freemium model. The next one is advertisement. You can run ads in your app and there are two ways to do it. We recommend one service called AdMob by Google. It allows you to serve apps, or excuse me, serve ads in your app that are relevant to your users. So they click on it and you make money from them. Essentially click on your ad in your app. Um, the other one is ad roll. Same thing. They'll uh, serve ads in your app and then that way you can make money from those uh, transactions. All right. Then the next one is going to be uh, premium services. So um, what you could do is you can have people sign up for free, but then let's say you have an annual service like right here on this example. Uh, let's say you're a personal trainer and they can use your app for free, but then you have diet and exercise plans they could buy for $50, $100, $200. Uh, that'd be an example of a premium service that they can add into the app. All right. And number six would be uh, affiliate products. So um, an example is if you sign up for Instagram, I'm, I'm just gonna Instagram, um, Amazon, uh, influencer account and you can promote any product that they have uh, that's relevant to your application and people can buy it right through your app and you get paid commission on every product they buy uh, from Amazon as an influencer. There's a lot of other affiliate based accounts, but this is a good example. Okay, now step number seven is going to be angel investor. 
Now, angel investors are actually the easiest to get because they're in your pocket. Now, I'm not talking about reaching out to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and having them invest in your app idea. If they can, awesome, that's great. But what I'm speaking about is your professional network. You want to reach out to people uh, that are already successful in what they do. They they have a successful business. Maybe it's a law firm or a private practice or a car dealership or a landscaping company or they have other apps they've launched. But these are people that are already successful in business and they understand business. And you want to reach out to them because you're going to show them that the app industry is going to be a six point two or six point three trillion dollar industry by 2021. That's a lot of money, and that's a huge opportunity. If you have a great app idea that they can get on board with, they're going to be very excited to join your app and, and uh, give you the funds you need. So really easy to do. Once you've, you've done steps one through six, you're going to pick up the phone, and you're going to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Investor, thank you so much. Uh, how you been? Um, thank you for taking my call, or how you been? It's been a long time. Listen, I have an app idea. Can I get your opinion? Can I get your opinion on my app idea? Listen, I know you're successful in business right now. I value your opinion. Can we meet for coffee? That's going to lower the buyer barrier, and they're going to be very excited to speak with you because it appears to them that you want their um, opinion and advice to effectively launch this app. So you're going to sit down with them, and you're going to show them steps one through seven, or excuse me, one through six, because step seven is meeting with them. So you're going to share the six steps, and you're going to show them what it is. You're going to show them what the app's about. And during that meeting, if they are not 100% blown away by all the work you've put in, then, then I do not know what to tell you. <laughs> because uh, by the time they've seen everything, the blueprint, the annotation, the prototype, mark strategy, revenue model, uh, your website set up, you have all your social media cranking, you're getting thousands of pre-signups every month, it's going to be pretty much a business in a box for them, and it's going to be a no-brainer. So you want to make sure that you present it this way, and I guarantee you, you're going to launch your app quickly. You do this fast and get all the steps done, there would be no reason you cannot have your app in development within the next 30 days. So these are the seven steps you need to help you effectively launch your app idea. But if you like the plan I gave you today, uh, we would be more than happy to help you execute this plan. Uh, so what you want to do is keep all this, all your notes, and then when we speak, uh, feel free to ask me any questions, but this is going to allow you to um, work with us directly and we can help you do everything professionally with our company here at Suite 24. So I look forward to our one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, appointment so that way I can help you launch your app idea quickly. You make it a great day and I look forward to seeing your app in the App Store.